You could get me to a recycling bin. Who said that? Although I sure don't notice any recycling bins around here. All right, where are you? What do you want? Recycling? Yes, recycling. I've been trying to get recycled for ages, and instead I end up in a gutter, get washed into some stinky old storm drain, and next thing I know, I get washed into the ocean and end up here with some loser who can't even find me a recycling bin. Did you wash up here from the storm drain too? No, I did not wash up here from a storm drain. <laughs> and I, I can't believe I'm actually carrying on a conversation with a, with a dead and up old plastic bottle. <gasps> I'm not old, <laughs> and those aren't dents. <laughs> They're only temporary imperfections. Once I'm recycled into something new, I'll be shiny and beautiful again. <laughs> oh, come on, please, please, would you stop crying? Look, I'm sorry I didn't mean it, all right? It's just a guy can get really cranky being stranded out here uh, weeks on end, nothing to eat but whatever washes up on shore. And I, and I'm thirsty all the time. Look, I'm sorry. You know, the more that I look at you, I realize you really are an attractive bottle, okay? And I, I have to admit, it's nice to have somebody to talk to again after being so alone out here for so long. Look, look if you promise not to cry, I'll, I'll tell you my story, all right? I, I was on a boat. I was having a wonderful party. From there, I, uh, I fell overboard and... I swam for hours. I've been here for weeks. Look, my story is way too depressing. I, I'd rather talk about your story. You, you said something about that you, you washed up from a storm drain. How on earth did that happen? Well, glad you asked. Have I a story to tell you? A story filled with mighty adventures, travels, heroes, and even tragedies. My story begins in a quiet neighborhood on, of all things, a red car. Boy, washing this car in this nice sunny day sure is hot work, isn't it, Nick? Huh? Yep. Man, I wish I had... Oh, you know what? She brought me out a bottle of water. <laughs> nice water, huh? Nice, clean, good bottle of water. Mm, 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 mm. All gone, though. Man, hot work, isn't it, huh? Well, I'll get back here on the top part. You keep working on the front. We'll just take care of business, huh? Wow, what a tough break. If, if only that guy that was washing his car would have would have simply recycled you when he had the chance. It's so easy to recycle these days. All he had to do was just toss you into his blue recycling container. I don't think he knew he had paid a deposit when he bought me. A deposit he could have redeemed at any nearby buyback recycling center. And if he didn't know where the nearest recycling center was, he could have simply called 1-800-RECYCLE to find out. Uh, that's interesting and all, but, but get back to your story. So, so there you were, you were heading for a stormwater inlet. What happened next? Yes, I was in a desperate situation, speeding towards an open stormwater inlet. No hope in sight. But then, she came, my rescuer, one of this story's heroes. Hey, little bottle, you don't belong in the storm drain. You belong in a recycle bin. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. My name's Karen. I work I'm for Paul. the city of Ventura. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. What's up this morning? I couldn't help but notice that the car washing activity oh. that you have was... Um, causing this bottle to float down the gutter here, and it was going to enter a storm drain down Ooh. at the end of the street. Ooh. Well, yeah, I know. We were washing the car, getting it all cleaned up, and got the soap all over it. I didn't even see the bottle going down the drain. Yeah. Well, it, did you know that anything that enters a storm drain or gutter will go into the um, creeks or the rivers and ultimately end up out at our beach? Well, no. Well, I, I knew it ended up somewhere, but I wasn't really sure where it ended up. You mean even the soap and stuff off of here, if I rinse it off, will go right down the drain? Oh, sure. Um, it's common misconception on the part of the public that um, the storm drain water is also treated, just like your water in the house, 
uh, goes to the, uh, if you take a shower or you're washing yeah. dishes, it goes to the treatment plant. They it call gets that treated. gray water? Right. Yeah. Okay. It gets treated, it, it's discharged back to the environment. But this water ends up going straight to an inlet. It'll go out here to the river, end up in a creek or a river, and ultimately out on the ocean oh, in geez, off well, Barna Beach. I don't want to do that because that's not a good thing. That's, well, what should I do? We want to move your car. Probably the best um, example would be to move your car up here onto the grass where we can uh, finish washing yeah. it. Rinse it off right, right on the grass. Right. We're watering the grass, rinsing the car. Exactly. Well, that's a good exactly. idea. Yeah. Well, Paul, now that you've finished washing your car, um, can I make a couple of suggestions in terms of um, what you can do in the future to keep the runoff from getting into the storm drain? Well, sure. I'm, there's lots of things, I'm sure. Well, um, the first and foremost thing is I always try to suggest using a commercial car wash or take it to one of the uh, do-it-yourself centers uh -huh. um, because that water is collected, it's treated, and ultimately ends up at the treatment plant before we discharge it back yeah, to the environment. Yeah, I can see. But you know what? I, I really like doing it myself. But uh, is there some kind of real good soap or something that I could use if I want to do it myself? To well, sure, because uh, first of all, you know, pulling it up on the lawn, that's a uh -huh. porous surface so that any of the uh, wash water will end up on the lawn and soak into the lawn. Um, if you want to use uh, biodegradable soaps, that okay. would be good. Yeah. Always check the labels uh -huh. and make sure that um, there's no phosphate in the soap. Okay. Um, the phosphate getting into the storm drain can ultimately lead to like an algae bloom yeah. in waterways. Okay. And that degrades the waterways to the point where, you know, the fish and aquatic life can mm -hmm. um, die. Well, you know, not just with my car, but now that since we've been talking, I've kind of realized that, you know, I clean paint brushes sometimes in the gutter there if after I've painted, you know, water-based paint or... Sometimes I've worked with cement and I clean off my tools right down there. It's just easier. It doesn't make a mess in my yard. But what you're telling me now is that stuff's going to go right into the storm drains and ultimately end up out in the ocean. So You're exactly right. You're mm. exactly right. We don't want that to happen. So um, I'd be glad to walk around with you. And hey, you know, that. maybe that's a good idea because I'm sure my neighbors and stuff would, uh, maybe there are some things that we can see around our houses that would kind of stop some of this pollution going into the drains and stuff. Uh, I'm all for that. Okay, right? let's do it. Hey, let's take a few minutes and let's do it. Well, Paul, I noticed you have a pile of compost here, and I also noticed that you've got a lot of landscaping along this strip. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah, well, you know, it's always a good um, idea to try and landscape as much mm -hmm. bare ground as possible because this bare soil right here yeah. um, can ultimately end up in the storm drain, just like when we did the car washing activity here, we could have um, impacted this compost pile and sent it into the storm yeah, drain. Yeah, I know there's a lot of nitrogen stuff in compost. That's why exactly. it works so good. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's always a good idea. If you're going to have raw material sitting out like this um, to cover them with okay. some kind of plastic sheeting, you okay. could use a tarp that mm -hmm. you can buy from your local yeah, hardware store. Or something. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that way, if it rains in, in the process, this material doesn't end up going okay. out into the street. Mm -hmm. um, I also noticed you had a sprayer here. You spray oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, fertilizer, things like that. They're, no, no pesticides or anything. I'm uh -huh. organic, but, you know. Well, do you, one of the things I might suggest is that, you know, always check your weather report and make sure mm -hmm. that the um, it's not going to rain mm -hmm. right after you apply any kind of material because ultimately that's going to wash off and get into the storm drain yeah, that's also. True. That's true. Um, always check your labels. Use mm -hmm. a, um, products that would be less toxic in any, yeah. any situation. And don't over-apply. Okay. Because that ultimately, um, it won't help your grass grow quicker or greener. Mm -hmm. It ultimately just ends up going, going into the storm the drain. drain. Yeah, I use a lot of mulch, too, on certain bare spots. I know it's better That's to keep idea. the moisture in the ground and it doesn't run off as much as the compost and stuff. You know, uh, what about the gutters on my house or the storm drains and stuff? Can we walk over? Maybe you can show me a few things that I could might do with that. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure, Come I'd on. be glad to. You know, Karen, when it rains, the water just comes roaring down through here roars out across my driveway right down into the storm drain now i know water's tight here in ventura sometimes is there something i could do to kind of maybe capture a little bit and make better use of it oh sure you you're right um there's a tremendous amount of sheeting that takes place off of a oh, roof yeah. and down a rain uh, spout so it looks like you've tried to divert it back up here yeah i tried I to i think if we use some of those bricks okay. you could cause it you could divert this water and cause it to channel back up onto the lawn and into the landscape areas and for a long-term solution, 
you know, you could remove some of this uh, grassy area here and put in some pea gravel, and that would make it a more porous. Uh, It'd soak in a little bit. Exactly. Because yeah. I know exactly. sometimes we have a low spot, and the water just kind of collects there, and you've got like a mud puddle there for a couple of days, and, you know, that's not always good either. But, okay, pea gravel. Okay. You know, I've got another drain in the backyard. Uh, mind if we go back there and take a look at things, oh, things sure. back there? I'll All right. follow you. Let's head back there. Okay. You know, Karen, here's another one of the storm drains, uh, and boy, that water comes roaring out of there, too. Got this big black hose over here, though, and sometimes I, like, hook it up there and kind of redirect that water out onto the ground because, you know, I hate wasting water, and, boy, you know, sometimes I just waste it anyway. Is there anything else that you could think of I might be able to do with this? Well, I think that's a great idea. Um, we, I think we could probably fasten the black hose up there to the uh, rain gutter itself, uh -huh. and I notice you have these empty barrels over here to yeah. the side. We could channel that water into one of these empty barrels and create a rain drum out of it where yeah. you could uh, use a, something like this to dip the water out later on and, and use um, as the rain use as quickly the rain as possible. Use the rainwater, oh, because you have rainwater much better to, to water plants with you than bet. just regular hose water. So, Well, uh, you mind if I take a minute or so? We can maybe hook that up right now. Oh, sure. Let's do it. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, come on out here in the back. Uh, Put this walkway in a little while ago uh, using busted up concrete. My neighbor tore out a driveway and, you know, I figured it's flat. I can use it back here. Uh, works out pretty good. Well, that's an excellent choice in recycling materials here for the pathway. It's a lot more porous than if you just had barren dirt here or if you concreted this in a solid slab. Boy, you know, that's true because sometimes we get mud puddles back here and I know, you know, standing water. Hey, that reminds me, all that water in that barrel, I mean, don't you get mosquitoes and stuff or what can you do about that? Oh, sure. You know, my suggestion would be to use this water as quickly as possible after each rain in your garden so that um, you don't have mosquito breeding. Okay, okay. Well, I can see that. Yeah, Karen, this is kind of my work area back here. I've got all kinds of projects going. I'm going to eventually refinish the benches here and a picnic table. i got some uh, cement I'm going to mix up in my big bucket here and patch the, uh, the patio here and maybe even build a barbecue if I get energetic. But, uh, you know, you said I'm not supposed to clean them in the, in the curb, which is what I usually do. So what's the alternative? Well, um, my suggestion would be to number one, you know, most of the paints that you can buy these days are um, latex paints and water they're water-based. Water -based. Yeah. So that means you can take them right inside and wash them out in the kitchen sink. Okay. Um, that's the best alternative to taking anything outside. That water gets um, goes to the sewer and ultimately is treated at the wastewater treatment plant uh -huh. before it's discharged back to the environment. Okay. Um, as far as uh, using any of these other things, I notice that you have. Um, some uh, oil-based paint here. Now, my suggestion would be, if you're going to have to use oil-based paint, that um, the thinner that you use to clean your brushes, yeah. um, you would just pour out as much as you need into a separate container, okay. uh, clean your brushes, and then allow that m mixture to uh, settle. And then you can pour off the clean thinner it back into the original okay. container, and then you can let that other dry out and eventually um, send it to the ha household hazardous waste um, pickups. Yeah, you know, I hear about those every so often out at the, the Harrison site there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, concrete. Uh, my suggestion for concrete is to um, always try to clean it into something like this. This is a yeah. great little container for that. Oh, yeah. And what you can really do good. is you can allow that material to also, after you washed it all off and cleaned your tools, you can let that sediment um, settle out and stay in the bottom of the container. You can take the water and you could put it out. You could probably even put it into your landscape. It's mm -hmm. not going to really hurt anything. And then um, let that solidify and you can solid waste that into your trash in small yeah. amounts like yeah, that. Because I know it's pretty easy to get off the insides even if it's hardened up a little right. bit. It comes right. off pretty easily. Right. Okay. Well, anything to keep it from going down those storm drains now that you've kind of informed me how to do this. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Well, I mean, I'm going to try to think if there's something else around here that I need your help with. You know, if I have another question, is there some place that I can call at the city like that and get some more answers to things? Oh, certainly. Um, the city provides free brochures and information um, if you call Environmental Services at 652-4525. Mm -hmm. Or if you see someone um, that needs to be reported in terms of um, washing concrete out at the uh -huh. storm drain or paint brushes or doing any of those kinds of activities that are going to impact mm -hmm. the storm drain, they can reach me at 677-4136. Okay.
Okay. And, you know, one more thing I think maybe we should talk about is the fact that, you know, that we've got a lot of open containers here. Yeah, I was working before I started washing the car, and, you know, I know you shouldn't have open containers. Right. Yeah. It's always best to, um, after you're through using whatever it is you're going to um, open up, you want to make sure you put the lids on them mm -hmm. and securely so that any rainwater won't impact your, your container. And, um, and that way, nothing gets into the storm drain that shouldn't. Oh, yeah. I guess I'll have to find the lid for that one. Well, thank you, Karen, uh, for taking a little bit of time here. You know, it's been a nice day, and thank you for your information. You know, let's head out back to the front, and uh, i got to finish washing the car. <laughs> okay, Waxing. all right. Okay? Sure. Great. Thank you. Uh-huh, thank you. All right, well, thank you, Karen, for coming today and showing me a few things. Oh, I, I sure. I really appreciate your sure. help, uh, and I'll spread the word to my neighbors and stuff. Uh, you have a great day. Okay, okay? I will. Thank you I'm much. I'm going to take this bottle back oh, and well, recycle it at my office. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we don't want him getting away. Okay. Thank you. Have a take great care, day. Take care, Paul. Bye-bye. Wow, that stormwater expert from the city of Ventura certainly wasn't the hero the way she rescued you from that storm drain inlet. And then she taught that guy how to be stormwater smart. And best of all, she was taking you to be recycled just like you always wanted to be. Oh, yes. I heard her mention that she had a recycling program back at her office where she was going to take me to be recycled. In Ventura, anyone who wants help setting up a recycling program after business, school, or office can call the city of Ventura Environmental Services Office at 652-4525. At this point, I bet you were feeling pretty happy. Oh, yes. Life was grand at that point. I had been rescued and was being taken to be recycled by my hero. But, as they say, on top of the world at one point and in the gutter the next. And that's just what happened to me. Thanks to one pothole in the wrong place, my hopes, my dreams of being recycled were dashed. Yes, it was a dark day as my hero drove away and I fell into that dark storm drain inlet. If only someone would have called the City of Ventura Pothole Hotline at 652-4590. That pothole would have been repaired and this tragedy would never have happened. As it was, all my dreams for being recycled to be made into something new again were dashed in that single moment as I fell deeper and deeper into that storm drain. <laughs> I knew that my only fate from that point was to be washed out into the ocean, even further away from a recycling bin. Oh, that is, I'm so sorry to hear that is such a sad story. But yet, there must have been been some hope for you at this point because I understand a lot of cities clean out their storm drains from time to time and and you could have been rescued and recycled at that point. Yes that's true. During my travels in the storm drain I learned that the city of Ventura cleans out all their storm drains at access points at least once per year. You see after the season's first rain I was carried a long ways through the underground storm drain pipes. It was then that I overheard some city crews above cleaning out the storm drain access point where I was. Oh, DC! See you guys cleaning out the storm drains. I had a lady come by my house a couple weeks ago. Man, she told me all kinds of stuff about the nasty stuff that ends up down in here. Oh, geez, man, look at all that mud down in there. Is that one of the worst kind of sediments and pollutants there is? Yeah, we pick up trash and sediments from landscaping and the trees. A lot of it comes from construction sites, too. Oh, It's geez. pretty loud here. Let's go over here. Yeah, thanks. Man, I, I see all that mud in there, but, you know, I never thought that mud was that much of a pollutant. I mean, what does the mud do? Well, there's more than mud. There's sediment in there. There's trash. And uh, it comes from landscaping, pesticides. comes off of uh, the streets. Well, that mud and sediment, okay, when it flows down, I mean... What kind of, what does it do to the environment? Why should we be concerned? Well, you've heard of mussels in the stream beds yeah. and ocean floors. Yeah, low part of the food chain stuff. Yeah. That's right. Well, the mussels are scoured off of the uh, stream bed by the water and the sediment. Oh. Now, in addition to the mud and stuff, I mean, I hear about bacteria and things being washed down into the ocean. Where does that bacteria come from? Well, most of the bacteria 
are from non-human sources. They come from animals, wild animals, and uh, pets. Oh, like doggy do, huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, when I go to the beach, man, or the park, I always take stuff to clean up after my animal. But you know, I know not everybody does that. I mean, is that when I hear about beaches being closed and kids getting sick? Is that? Well, not only on the beaches, but uh, the, the pet waste in your backyard will be washed down onto the beaches within about an hour in oh. the Ventura area. Jeez, jeez. I mean, what if you what if you had a whole lot of dogs? I mean, is that? As many as a hundred dogs for three days would be enough to close the beach. Oh yeah. man, that's that's terrible. Yeah. Because, man, I know kids go swimming at the beach and get sick. I've known some of them that do. You hear about the beach closings all around. It's got to be hard on the business and stuff down by the ocean, isn't it? Restaurants and things like that. Yeah. Oh, man, I see this big truck. Is this what you use to clean out the drains? Yeah. Well, how often does the city clean out the drains? Oh, once a year. Once a year? What is some of the stuff that you find down in there? Oh, we get mud, silt, and uh, trash. Trash? Ugh. Leaves. Uh-huh. Well, cool. now... Does it take a lot of time and energy to clean these out? Well, not anymore. We got this back there. It works really well. Oh, wow. We don't have to climb down in there anymore. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to climb down in there. Geez, well, now how often do they do it? Like once a year, did you say? Once so a year. So loud, but no close to this truck. Well, once a year, and then uh, we also do a, when it's, uh, right before it rains, we clean it again. Okay. Well, geez, thanks, guys. You, I learned a lot today from you. Uh, you know, hey, keep up the good work. All right. Talk to you later. Right. There, I think we got it. Got oh, wait, a wait, out. wait a minute. I see a bottle down there. See that bottle? We got to yeah. get that bottle out before it blows down the ocean. Check up the RPMs. There, I think we got it. Uh, no, the bottle's... Oh, darn. Wow, how sad. You, you were so close to being rescued and recycled after that. From there, of course, I ended up washing out of the storm drain into a waterway. And from there, I washed onto the beach. Once there, I had one last hope for being picked up and recycled through the City of Ventura Partners in Progress program. Hey Robert, thank you so much for coming out today, joining our Partners in Progress Adopt the Beach program. Very glad to be here. Very glad yeah. to be here, Johnson. Okay, thanks a lot. Our volunteers are a very important part of this program. Um, I see there's a bottle here. Uh -huh. um, this bottle has looks like it's come in from the storm drains out, out uh, through the streets and into the storm drains here. And if it wasn't for volunteers like yourself picking it up, um, it would be actually flowing, it'd be flowing out to the ocean. Uh -huh. and, harming the animals out there, so I really appreciate you coming out. Okay. Um, we do have supplies for um, recycling, uh, bags for recycling for materials, okay. so please put that in the recycle bag. Okay. Okay, Partners in Progress is a City of Ventura program uh, working with through Community Services and the Parks Division. Uh, we have an Adopt the Beach and Adopt the Park program where volunteers come out and pick up litter for us. Uh, we have over 500 volunteers from a variety of uh, sources of the community. We have partnerships with kids groups such as the Moms Club of Ventura, um, Ch Children's World Preschool. We have vocational programs like Cole Vocational and Westview Services. Uh, businesses like Patagonia and um, Sea Things and Seaward Fish and Chips join us. Um, all of these volunteers join together to adopt a particular location at the beach or park to help us clean up and pick up litter. Um, any group or individual that does a commitment to six cleanups a year, they'll find recognition signage at their location. And we also put their name on the City of Ventura website under the Partners in Progress program. Um, with the um, cleanups, what we have is a group called the Ambassadors through the Parks program. They meet the volunteers out of their cleanup location and give them supplies, gloves, bags, and park patrols. There's a couple advantages of scheduling cleanups through us. One is that we do provide the supplies, and the other is that if a group just decides on their own to clean up a location, they may be going to a location that was just cleaned up by another group. So it really is beneficial to go through our program um, to schedule any cleanups. We also do welcome one-time events. Uh, if someone would like to just come out one time, if a group uh, would like to do that. Uh, a lot of students enjoy working with Partners in Progress, getting their community service hours that are often required these days. Um, if anybody would like to schedule a cleanup with us, they can call me at 805-652-4555. Hey, Robert, so thank you so much for joining and being uh, one of our many volunteers. Here's, 
here's some uh, gloves for you so your hands don't get dirty as you're picking up uh, the trash off the beach. Hope this fits you. Uh, I have two bags here. One is for trash and one is for recyclables, like the bottle that we just found. So here's your, here's the bottle. You put that right in there. And here's a park patrol. Just uh, helps you pick up the litter. Thank you. That'll help. And when you're done, we'll come back in and uh, pick up the trash from you, and that'll, that'll be it. So thank you so much for joining us. Sounds great. Thank Appreciate you. It. Glad to be thank here. So Glad much. to be here. I drifted around for weeks out in the ocean, dodging all kinds of sea life that wanted to eat me. And then I landed here with you. But you know what? Even though I haven't fulfilled my life's dream of being recycled, at least I've made a great new friend. Well, yeah, you're, you're the best plastic bottle I've ever had for a friend, too. But you know, the really sad part of this whole story is that you never did get to be recycled just like you always wanted to be. Yes, being recycled would be the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to me. Well, maybe I can't recycle you right now, but uh, I sure can tickle you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've been rescued. We've been rescued. <laughs> hey, I, I quit. What does he mean about being rescued? Who is sweet one? Hmm. Hey, hey, how soon can you get us can, back to civilization? Can you walk okay on your own, buddy? Yeah, of course I can. What does that have to do with okay, anything? Okay, well, as I see it, you got two choices. You've got Harbor Boulevard about half a mile up that away, or you've got the Ventura Harbor right here. Get yourself something to eat in nice restaurants there. They also have clothing stores. You can get yourself some nice clothing. Well, I got to go now. Got a lot of recycling to pick up. Got a lot of recycling to pick up, and you can take care of yourself on your own, okay? <laughs> <laughs>